And I remember the story when you beat the game with him, you end up on his father's father's farm and he's like working in the garage or whatever and he's still talking down to you, blah blah blah. And Axel just like stands up to him. He just rips his arms off to get out of the machine because his dad is the one that hooked him up to the machine Mm -hmm. and tells him off and just like walks away through the uh, corn or whatever was planted in the field. He's just walking through the field armless. And I think that was just a B.A. moment, especially when I, I know I was like 10, maybe. Yeah, somewhere around there, give or take four years. But that was I was awesome. I was like, worth beating it. Hello and welcome to level 105 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, Dang. the gaming podcast with both takes and those strings attached. I am Jeremy here with my compadre, David. What up? How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. A little tired. But, uh, you know, it's the end of the day. How about you? Yeah. Very tired. I have to do yard work in this, you know, 85 plus degree. It's the worst. Buggy. It was, it was ridiculous. It's, it's zapped your boy. I, I've been, you know, I've been gathering some conditioning and doing stuff. I'm like, I can take, I can take care of this. I got a battery uh, operated lawnmower, so it's not going to mm-hmm. put as much heat on me. I'm like, I got this. And just weed whacking. And I was like, uh oh. This is this is going to be a problem, you know, dude, I I hate weed whacking. I I must not know how to do it because I can't not get filthy from all the grass and stuff from a weed whacker. Oh, you're probably doing all right then. It's just yeah, all over my doing. legs by the time yeah. I'm done. Yeah, you're destroying <laughs> it. It's just, it's just throwing it at your legs, your legs and your feet and your mm-hmm. shoes. And then you take off your. Shoes and there's grass and dirt and rocks on your socks. You know, what, what's going on here? You know, it's gross, but got it done, ladies and gentlemen. Chickens, Good. ducks, hens, ostriches, walruses, baby seals, um, flamingos. We welcome them into this level of the pod. I like it. Let's jump right into the games conversation. We got a couple of I think really nice, fun topics. But before we get to the topics, of course, we always talk about the games that we're playing. Um, I can go first and get mine out the way really quick. Sure. Okay. So games I've been playing. Well, I've been playing one game. And it ain't been Manor Lords. <gasps> no. Um, I am trying, but I am I am I am losing. Yeah. With that. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably jump back into it. Just gotta give it some space. Let it let them figure some more stuff out. Mm-hmm. They have been doing bug releases or bug patches and fixes and stuff, so that's been helpful. Um, but the game that I have been playing, I went back to it. Back to I, it. Okay. I went back to it because I was, is it what I I think was it is? wavering off a little bit. Mm-hmm. I got in a little bit of Fable too. Okay, that's what I thought. Got it in was. a little Fable too. Yeah. All right. Logged good. back in. Had half a meal hit my pocket right when I logged in. Always nice to have that. Um. Right now I'm in the process of doing a bunch of stuff and you know the missions. Right now I'm at the at the mission where you for those that are familiar with it, where you go to the crucible. Um, so that way you can show that you're worthy and you can get picked by Lucian. You can then take you to the spire so you can uh, get Garth and you go there with uh uh what's her name? I forgot her name. Hannah, I think it is the hammer, they call her in the in the game. So I'm at that point, but yeah, I mean you're real I'm reliving all the story beats. It's great. It reminds me of when I was, I think Fable 2 came out, I want to say 2011, that may not be it, but let's say it is, um, that, I mean, you know, we're talking about early 20s for me. Yeah, I just say a little bit after high school. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, and just in my prime, mentally, mentally, physically, not emotionally, <laughs> mentally and physically. <laughs> um, hey, two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three ain't bad, uh, but yeah. So that's pretty much all I've been able to get in. Are there other games I've been wanting to play? Sure. Like I said, Mana Lords. I talked a little bit before about Project Hospital. I am trying mm-hmm. to make myself wait for that to go on sale. Because here's the thing. I've got like 13 bucks in my Steam wallet. Mm-hmm. The game is 25 I'm like, hey, brother, it's only $12. I'm like, yeah, but if it goes on sale, 
it might drop to like 15 or maybe even something less than that. And then I'm basically getting it for free, even though it's actual money in there. It's never free. It won't be free this whole time. It's just, I just won't be spending more money. You know, it's gamer logic. Exactly. And like I said, and like I said before, I've already got, I've got other games, you know, right. Um, I'm heck, heck, you know, I need to make myself go ahead and keep playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. Beat that. Beat that, buddy, before you buy another Steam game or, or beat something else. You, you but, can um, beat those? Kind of, yeah. You can beat the scenarios. And huh. then you can do, like, you know, sandbox mode where you just play however long you want to. But I'm not going to play Roller Coaster Tycoon like that. I also have Planet Coaster, which is, like, a more like a, like a more updated version of a Roller Coaster Tycoon, like that type of game. Mm-hmm. I probably put maybe twelve between twelve and twenty hours into that. I've actually been thinking about going to play that again because I think you can kind of actually okay now whatever I'm going to say this. I think you can kind of actually somewhat like like I don't know somewhat kill the people on the rides. <laughs> like you can like you can unfinish the rides and it just launches them right. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this game came out a while ago, so it's you know you're just trying to break the game and figure out stuff. There's no malice in it, but um, yeah. But that's pretty much been it, been it for what I've been playing. Fable 2. That's it. Nice. Um, What I've been playing is Overwatch, but not anymore. I'm banned for a month again. What? I don't know. I I stopped talking. I'm tired of being banned, but like I'm on one of the facebook groups and people are just getting banned like i don't even join the group chat i don't do nothing they're banned i'm banned i don't know so you i'll see that have, again in a month and see you what must happens. have officially it's a fit this is what happens when you're doing podcasts and you get famous you have a hater the, there so there's there's someone at blizzard that is a hater and whenever <laughs> they can they ban you uh, um Apex DVD, I caved and got all of the DLC I missed mm. for DVD. So I'm trying to get all the achievements for that again. Yeah. And one of them, by the way, they added Nick Cage to DVD. Okay. 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 And he went all out with his voice acting in that game. Just the weird oh, things he's saying and stuff like that and the screams. Well done. But his perks are very malicious. Okay. Yeah. So one of his perks is when you look at the killer, it shows their aura for like two seconds or whatever, but you also scream. So that gives the killer a little, hey, there's a survivor over here. Right. So you can sit there and just scream. Mm. And like the achievement for every survivor is to exit the trial and it's hard to do that when you're screaming all the time mm-hmm. and one of his other perk is when you're in the hurt state you if you're not moving and you're crouched you can hit the action button and you can go down so you can down yourself mm-hmm. like how how does that help me when i'm trying to run away from the killer all right sure does and it. i i just completely forget what the third one is but that one was the hardest edge of the trial as a survivor with three perks I've had to do yet. Mm. But besides those, I've been playing Hellblade 2. Hellblade 2. Senua's Boogaloo. Actually, that's not what it's called. It's called yeah, it's, Senua's uh, Sacrifice. Yeah. Senua's Saga. Oh, Senua's Saga. That's right. Sacrifice is the first one. Yeah, what yes. am I doing? It's, and it's actually a Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. Not Hellblade, Center was Saga. Oh, okay. They're switching it up. You know it, what? Yeah. Uh, I'll give I, at least I don't that's like how that. it's listed in my Steam. So. Yeah, I don't I don't like that. I'll give them a pass though. But I don't like that. <laughs> um no spoilers. I've only played three hours so far. I'm finishing it by the end of this weekend for sure. But I absolutely love it. Yeah. It is in my opinion a continuation of the first one how it feels how it plays Mm -hmm. how the story is being told like if you felt immersed and like loved the first one i'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one 
Well, I, I think that's why I've been playing. That's that's um, I've I've heard a lot of good things. Like I we I think we looked you know we looked online and saw there's you know you're gonna have some outlets that do a little bit of hateration. You know what I'm saying hateration holleration. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know overall yeah the fact that is it feels like you're picking up right where you left off. That's great for people that love that that type of gameplay that type of storytelling. Um, there's there are some publications that's hating on it, but let's let's remember. The first one didn't get a bunch of eight nines and tens either. So it's always kind right. of interesting where there's like a revisionist thing that happens with these publications where they almost kind of like um kind of like endear or pedestalize these games that they themselves said weren't really that up, weren't really up to snuff. But because the game got so much um uh, you know adornment and 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 adulation, you know, from people that played it. Then all of a sudden it's oh we can't wait this is going to be so good such high standards for this game I'm like oh then you give this game a seven before right and now it's like <laughs> oh it, you know it, it's yeah it's ridiculous but that's awesome um yeah I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts when you get done with with sacrifice there and like just kind of how you you feel like it wraps up seeing was continuation of her story and like what the possible next step could be I would this feels like a game that will get a third installment. I hope so. That's what yeah. I was about to say, but you know, you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. And I was also going to say just a quick note that I was, um, you said when they added, you know, you got the DLC for DVD, mm-hmm. um, one of the, in one of the killers and stuff. And you said, Nick, and I was fearful that you were going to say Canon instead of cage. Like I actually <laughs> was relieved. You said, cage, not Canon. <laughs> Because if it was the cannon, he wouldn't be going around trying to kill you. He'd be going around trying to impregnate you. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's 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 a good thing. I don't know that, which one's scarier, honestly. Uh, Nick Cannon, <laughs> Nick Cannon. <laughs> uh, so yeah, with Nick Nick Cage being in there is pretty cool. Such a such a good yeah. It's actor, definitely you know, weird, it's funny, weird dude. And yeah, like you said, like I could see him going a hundred and fifty, two hundred percent on the voice acting and performance, just doing the nuttiest things possible. Mm-hmm. That's what he is. That's who he is. Um, but that's nice. So you've been busy. Well, I was going to say you've been playing four games, but you got banned from one again. Again. So you're back down to three, at least I'm for now. And then three right now. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you got a hater. That's for real. Blizzard, Blizzard, stop hating. I don't know what your guys' problem is. <laughs> is it because we, we kind of crap on you in a lot? I, I understand that it can be a little bit frustrating, but you got someone that's a diehard fan. They play your games. They give you money. I mean, you know. He's up. Right. Good Lord. And, you know, it's not talking crap if it's true. It's not talking just, crap. Just don't crap do crappy things. things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, you freaking crapped on Apex, I feel like, much more than Overwatch, and they still got you. Yeah. Just to let you chug along. I, I, it's my favorite game ever, apparently, yeah. and I still rate it, like, a seven. Yeah. I mean, three or four There's weeks so ago. you stuff wrong with it. Three or four weeks ago, you were basically saying, hey, they don't pay their artists, even though they lie and tell us they do. They still, they're still like, go ahead and play our game. You're good to go. Overwatch is like, yeah, soy boy. Yeah, bam. You know, like it's <laughs> it's absurd. Get your stuff together. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but with that out the way, then let's move to our topics. So we got Ooh, two topics. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, I feel like with based based on like what they are, we could go either way. I could start with mine, or if you want to start with yours, it's Yeah, let's go with yours. I right. went with mine last time. Okay, yeah, 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 I think so. All right, Maybe. so let's start Let's start with mine. So I mentioned earlier that I'm playing Fable 2. I'm at the Crucible. This is um, one of the kind of story beats of a game, of this game that I remember, that I feel very fond about, and different stuff like that. And so I want to do a nice little fun topic of let us recall, let us go back memory lane and think about some of our favorite video game story moments, okay? Mm-hmm. Like people always have their favorite movies and they have their favorite movie moments. So like one of my, I mean, one of my, my favorite movies, the Godfather. Right. And, um, one of my favorite story moments is towards the end of the movie where, um, Michael is at the christening and that as he's doing the christening, he's having all the bosses of the other families whacked. He said this elaborate scheme, right. And one of my favorite, it's more so, I guess it's an action beat than a story beat. But one of them is um, 
one of his guy, one of his gangsters shoots a guy that's pretending to that's pretending to be. I think he's pretending to be an officer, or his his assassin's pretending to be an officer, and he shoots one of the mobsters on like city hall steps, the courthouse steps, and you see him get shot, and he reacts drastically, and then he tumbles down the steps, and it's just a great look and a great scene for a great movie, right? So games have that too. Obviously, games have stories, and they and they got. And they got they got they got great story moments. Mm-hmm. So um, I was curious if you had any story moments that came to mind. I can share one first, but if you have yeah, that, let's shoot back and forth. Okay, okay. So, um, one story moment of mine that I uh, absolutely you know I don't I don't know if adore is the right word, but I'm very fond of is actually um, when you're it's it's in the Elder Scrolls, okay. So I mean, newsflash there, right? Yeah, um, right. But the the story beat is essentially when you're in the uh, Dark Brotherhood. Now, again, it's the mission that everyone knows. It's when you're in the mansion and you have to kill everyone covertly without them knowing. But just how that story reveals itself, how your character is introduced to it. As a matter of fact, I would even say more so that maybe my favorite story beat going further than that is the actual introduction to the Assad, to the to Dark Brotherhood itself, where you wake up, right? Um, the Elder Scrolls games don't have a lot of cutscenes where it feels like it cuts and then you're you're someplace else. But that's one where it does, where you're someplace and it cuts. Um, you kill someone, you go to sleep, and it cuts, and you wake up, and you're in this cabin or whatever, and you're you're waking up, and you see this the intro. I forgot the character's name, but she's the one that basically introduces you to the Bar- Dark Brotherhood. And there's three people with with bags over their head, and you have to decide essentially who deserves to die, who you should kill. Right? Wow. It's one of my favorite story beats in that game because it does a great job of introducing a Dark Brotherhood, and it actually. You know, the the Elder Scrolls, I wouldn't say has a whimsical tone to it, but it has kind of like a nonchalant, I guess, tone to it, right? That the tone is so much is such darker and serious in that moment mm-hmm. compared to what you experience in the rest of the game that it really stuck out to me. And I was like, oh, man, this is awesome. I have to make this decision. This is crazy. I'm like, look, I've already killed one person. That's why I'm here. Right. But I had motives for killing that person. For me, right. I wanted a, I wanted their house, so I killed them for the house. <laughs> but with these three people, I don't know who they are. I don't know whether they're guilty or innocent of what they've been charged about or charged mm-hmm. for. And I have to make this decision and live with it. Right? I think it's a great one of my one of my favorite story story moments in a game is that Dark Brotherhood introduction. Yeah that that is that's good. This is probably you know crazy could you kill all three of them i mean you i think you could like i think you could just like just kill them if you wanted to but you only had to kill one for the actual story got it okay yeah okay um one of mine is in the last of us the first part Mm -hmm. um where ellie is in that one town and the leader, I think his name is David, and they're in like the restaurant on fire or whatever. And when the cutscene goes, and she just starts like hacking the crap out of him. Yeah. And that's when Joel comes in and like, you know, hey, it's me. It's okay. It's okay. Like, you know, because at that moment, even you know, she's lived in this terrible society all of her life, but she like she broke. At that moment, mm-hmm. you know, it was just break down, just hacking this guy, just letting all of it out. Like, I expected something from her, but it wasn't that. And that was I was I was blown away by that somatic. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, I mean, so many great story moments from The Last of Us. Yes. Um, another game that had, a, I think for me, quite a few great story moments, and I'm trying to think of which one I want to, I, I value more. And I guess I will go with the, I'm going to go with the beginning or at least the introduction. And that's Far Cry 4, when you get introduced to pagan men. 
Um, I've said before that Pagan Men, I think, is one of the top 15, 20 video game antagonists ever written. Um, just charismatic and intense and so hateable yet so likable at the same time. Um, and when you were first brought to the place, I forgot the name of it, but it's essentially an approximation or may actually take place in the Himalayas. But when you're going there um, to, I think, spread the ashes or just to revisit the homeland of your mother. Um, okay, and okay. Pagan Men kind of like gets you and secures you. And he goes about, you know, like, hey, you know, this is who I am and this is where you come from and different things like that. And just the charm and how there's the option of, um, you know, in the game, he offers the option of, of like what you would like to do because he has you with soldiers and you can like choose to, Got it. you know, you can choose to like, actually do something like fight right or when he leaves because you i think this happens when he leaves so he leaves you can choose to fight and run right or you can choose to wait for him to come back if you choose to wait for him to come back he comes back i think he shows you the shrine that he has to your mother um there's a discussion and then it's over and then the game ends Oh, so, yeah, I so remember hearing about that. Yeah, so technically the game can end in like five or seven minutes if you just don't <laughs> if you just don't become violent, which is it's a very interesting thing to say because he's maniacal and he's extremely violent. But the, it puts the onus on the gamer. If you choose not to be violent, you can get in and out of here pretty easy. Right. Um. So I think it's 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 a great story moment because it introduces pagan men so well his character and kind of introduces the stakes to the to the gamer to the player really well um and just and also introduces you to the beautiful world that they created there uh so that's like another great story moment for uh for for you know for a great game and i think again one of the best antagonists in gaming pagan man is just an absolute legend i i really love that how it can turn into this really long game yeah or it can be a seven-minute game. Yeah, for sure. It's very. It's a nice little, little twist. You know, I don't. I I haven't heard of that in any other game. You know, and, I think it's pretty clever. And it's and it's. I mean, just to go along because again, there's other great um. Um, story moments, and I think I have that right with the intro. There is a moment at the end where you come back when you finally surround him with like you can like choose to shoot and kill him. Or you can choose to let him leave. That's an option. And then usually what happens is that, like, so within that game, you're working with two other characters who are fighting back in the rebellion. And at one point, they split, and you can choose to help one or the other. If you help one character, they're fighting an evil dictator, pagan men. If you help one, right, the the country becomes a essentially a theocracy, right? And women are relegated to second class citizens. If you wow. um if you help the other person, it is it becomes a narco state. So it's it's like I'm helping you defeat this evil dictator, so you can either make it a theocracy or a narco state. So like neither of you there's no real good choices in the end. I was gonna say that sounds like a lose lose situation. Yeah. It, the, the main the main driver the main thing that that should compel you and that that gives you some kind of solace is that you're you're clo you're you're giving closure to your character that's that's pretty much it because no one else you know what i'm saying it, it, everyone else is bleeped up in this game for real so. <laughs> but it's a, it's a great game great story moments i had a uh co-worker that loved the the far cry series mm -hmm. um Another one of mine would have to be from Twisted Metal 2. And one of my favorite characters was Axel. He was the guy that was just on those two really big wheels. And he was just in the middle of it with the arms like stuck in the sides. Mm -hmm. And I remember the story when you beat the game with him, you end up on his father's father's farm. And he's, like, working in the garage or whatever, and he's still talking down to you, blah, blah, blah. And Axel just, like, stands up to him. He just rips his arms off to get out of the machine, because his dad is the one that hooked him up to the machine. Mm -hmm. And tells him off and just, like, walks away through the uh, corn or whatever was planted. 
in the field. He's just walking through the field, armless. And I think that was just a BA moment, especially when I, I know I was like 10, maybe. Yeah. Somewhere around there, give or take four years. But that was, <laughs> I was awesome. I was like, worth beating it. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm, I'm noticing that, like, um, that we're kind of choosing somewhat older games, not too older, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, somewhat older games. Um, I'm trying to think. What's my what's what's a third favorite? I mean, there's so many. I'm trying to think of one that really sticks out to me. Um, maybe let me look up the character's name for it first. So this is going to be a a great one. But this is um, there we go. So another another favorite care a favorite uh um story moment of mine is going to be the great betrayal and i could do you know what i'll skip that one i was going to do gta but i'm going to be honest with myself and say that i think my favorite character moment or story moment um is in um star wars uh what was it what is it what is it man like knights of the old republic the first one when you find out that your character was um with Darth, with Darth Revan, that your character who has, who's you've been developing, who has no idea who they were, was the actual Dark Lord that got portrayed by Darth Malak, right? Oh, okay. No one ever sees it happen until basically almost the end of the game. And it's a huge revelation. It's one of the great twists. It's a great story moment. Because if you're like me, <laughs> and I remember when I was younger, I, I want to be a Jedi. So I'm mm. a good guy. I am a good guy, right? And then it gets revealed at the end. They're like, hey, actually, you're Darth Revan. You're the Dark Lord. And the game's like, do you want to be evil or do you still want to be good? And I was like, oh, I got to be evil. <laughs> I understand I've been I understand I've been good this whole time, but I'm the Dark, I'm the dark Lord. I got to be evil. So, um, yeah, and then I chose to be evil. And then I killed all the good people name. that were friends of mine. Be. Right. Yeah, well, actually... Um, there's one I forgot. Is her name Bastilla? I'm terrible with names today. But um, it happens. Yeah, but she's uh, she could she starts off good, but you can actually um flip her and make her evil. So like some of the other people, like there's Karth, he's good, you know, and and uh Zalbar, which is basically like, kind of like a Chewy equivalent, right? Like he's good, and there's some other people. But then, um, yeah, you can flip them. But your character, you were to be the Dark Lord. And then I also was kind of mad about it because I'm like, well, then I feel like I should be way more powerful then. Even as I'm leveling up, <laughs> I should just be, I should just be destroying everyone, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's probably the I know that for sure. The probably the biggest story moment that I can think of. But uh, yeah, it's up there as one of my favorites. I, I was so geeked as a kid when that happened. I'm like, yes. I want to be evil. I have a reason to be evil. I have an excuse. I'm already evil. <laughs> it's meant to be. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, another one for me. I have to go back to it. Uh, the Last of Us. But part two this time. Mm-hmm. So we sat there for what? 10, 12 years for the sequel to come out. Uh-huh. You know? And you're just excited to see what you got to do with your duo. Mm-hmm. And then Joel, you know. Oh, you're never, talking about you're talking about that. Yeah, never, ever saw that coming. Yeah. And now you're like, I've played this game for an hour. What? Yeah. So what is the rest of it gonna be? Mm-hmm. And it ended up being a 45 hour game, at least for me, somewhere around there. That turned turned me over. I was like, what is going on? And it was still. And it was an amazing game still. Just totally, I didn't expect any of that. Yep. That's like, um, I don't know, that's like, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want a metaphor for that, that's almost like kind of like you've been waiting in line to get an elephant ear. And then while you're waiting in line to get an elephant ear, someone comes through with a machete and just cuts your balls right off. <laughs> that's what it felt like. <laughs> like I what, saying, I was trying to get an I, elephant I, ear. What happened here? I, 
I thought you were going to say the person in front of you gets the last elephant here, but no, you just went way left field on that one. Because that's what it was. That's what it felt like. You know, that story moment. That didn't, that didn't feel like someone yeah. getting the last elephant here. That's, I felt like I was, I was fixing to get me an elephant here, <laughs> and someone chopped my balls off, and now i got to figure out this situation. And this person that did it, I don't know this person. I've never met this person before in my life. Now i got to figure out who this person is. Mm-hmm. And then, hey, plot twist, the person that chopped off your balls is the hero of the story. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's, it's just absurd. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great example, too. Because it's a great story moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's great. Especially if like, you hate it at first. You just are filled with this like rage. Mm-hmm. But then you're like, I understand. As you get through it. You understand. I don't know how, it, how your emotional arc was for that. I, I hate it fervently to this day. <laughs> but I understand it. As, uh, same. Yeah. The the thing I just don't understand is why did the person that cut my balls off with a machete, why are they the hero of the story? Why can't they just be another character? <laughs> They're the hero? Right. So it's, uh yeah, it, it, it's insane. Um, Yeah, well, that's it for my topic, though. Great story moments. They're yeah. so impactful. You know, sometimes they, like, they stick with you, they resonate with you. You know, and then like sometimes it's it's the defining thing for the game. Like when you think back on your game, on your on you playing the experience, you know, playing that game and your experience with it. Like I think back to Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. There's so many other great moments in that game, and there may be other gameplay moments that are actually better than that. But that story element is so impactful that when I think back on it, that's what I think of. I think of oh, I'm right. Darth Revan. It's the twist. This is the twist of games. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So it's it's always fun to do. Um. Okay. So my topic. My topic is. Have you had any experience with games that you've been hyped for and waiting for, and come to find out they actually meet your expectations? Hmm. Now, see, this is a tricky one because I feel like most of the time, I feel like most of the time games don't do this. Right. They either, for for me at least, typically they don't reach my expectations. And I have to check myself on that because typically my expectations is just competence. And I don't get it. <laughs> so I got to check my things. But And then you have the few instances of games that exceed expectations. Um, games that meet expectations. That I was hyped for and it met it. Well, um, one one that I was hyped for and it met my expectations. I'm going to go back to this franchise because it's my favorite franchise, but mm-hmm. specifically the Elder Scrolls Four Oblivion. I was okay. super hyped for it. I knew that um, they were going to revamp the combat system. That was the one thing that they had to do based off of Morrowind and like different things and how gaming was going and they did it and it met it met every single one of my expectations um to the point where I I I have like like I will admit that I think Skyrim is the best of all the Elder Scrolls games but for me personally obviously I put Morrowind there first and I might put Oblivion second before Skyrim um because like I mean Skyrim like did so many things and it's great, but like Oblivion really kind of was able to take the the ground of like Morrowind, having that mystery that mystery and different things like that, and all these different things that 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 were formed with it, but feeling a little bit more grounded. Skyrim feels just a little more fantastical. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, Oblivion for sure was one where I was super hyped for it. I'm like I cannot wait for this to come out. And it came out and it met every single expectation. And I just loved it. And I just, I, I remember playing through the main story, going through the gates, going into oblivion and stuff like that. Um, um, and, and yeah, it was, it was so good. It was like, it, it was like it hit every note perfectly the way that I wanted it to, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, oblivion for sure. That's, that's one for sure. I, 
I should have seen that one coming. I know that, I know that you've said many times that that one's your favorite over all of them. Well, um, World was my favorite. Oh, oh. Yeah, but Oblivion yes. was the one I didn't I didn't know about Morrowind. Morrowind's out for like a when year it, or two. Right. By the time I got to it, yeah. Um, one of mine is Titanfall Two. Oh God. I played the crap Perfect. out of one. Perfect. All right, and I was like, "Oh crap!" There's a second one coming out. I got the collector's bundle with the helmet and everything, and mm-hmm. oh my god, it was, it was really cool that they put like a multiplayer story thing in there, and the multiplayer was great. I I couldn't have been happier. Yeah, it's Titan. I mean, as, as time goes on. It will be. It will show that Titanfall Two is a nearly perfect first-person shooter. I swear, it is. It is as close to perfection as you can get. It. it that may be my favorite first-person shooter of all time. Yeah, because uh, I was gonna say you're not really into that kind of franchise too much. I don't. I don't play a lot of first-person. I play enough of them to know what I'm doing. But right. that one, like I, I think I've played Titanfall Two. I think I've beat it two or three times. Uh, like I'm just going back for one. It's a six hour campaign. Jump in there, but it's just packed. Again, when I think about the the time travel mission, how just innovative that was and unique that is, and you know all the different things that people you know attribute to Call of Duty that Call of Duty just stole from Titanfall. Now these other games stole from Titanfall. Like right. it's the it's the perfect shooter. So yeah, the the fact that that hit every everything perfectly for you that it met your expectations that's great yes that's great that's a great game man i should probably play it again um let's see here another game that met my expectations so i will have to see because the newest version of this game there's a lot of pub going on around it a lot of trailers being released a lot of a lot of hoopla Mm -hmm. about it right now okay but um, one game that was perfect, that met my expectations, NCAA Football 14. The sports Ooh. game. But that game did everything the way that I, the expectations, I was so hyped for it. For how it did the presentation, for how, you know, um, the dynasty mode and all that stuff worked out. How they revamped recruiting a bit from past years. Like the recruiting makes 100% sense to me. I know some people prefer the older forms of recruiting but to me that one they did it perfectly ncaa football 14 hit everything perfectly i was so hyped for it i've said before i think for about a year to a year and a half that was the only game i owned for my 360 was ncaa football 14 and that's the only game i played so if i mean if i had to do a i don't have the hours for it right um because for one i lost my profile and two they weren't really tracking hours played yeah i would think that then I have absolutely no doubt that game has the most hours of any game ever. I've probably put over a thousand hours into that game when I think about all the times that I've that I've played it. Um, right. It's it was just it was just exceptional. It met every single expectation I had. That's really cool. I did not expect a, a sports game coming up. I know. There. I know. There's usually just so much bad talk about them. So terrible. You know, the, but, the new NCAA football 25 is coming out, I think, July of this year. Okay. Um, so we'll see what they'll do. We'll see how we'll see how bad EA did this summer. <laughs> people think that, oh, we're so high. They changed it. Changed. It's EA. It's EA. Just watch. Well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um. Oh, I OK. This one. Modern Warfare 2, the original. Mm hmm. So, like, I started playing Call of Duty 4 after my brother brought over his Xbox one weekend. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got 10th Prestige in that and everything, blah, blah, blah. I loved it. Modern Warfare 2 came out nonstop. That was the only game I would play. Yeah. Like, I have over 60 days played on it. Huh. I don't. I don't know what that... Uh, that's not... As much as Apex, I don't think, but 60 days. Yeah, it's only 1,400 hours. But that was the most of a game I've ever played at that time. Yeah. And 
like I think I've said before, I was like ranked 700 in kills before all the hacking came in, and mm-hmm. it, I loved it, and and I I beat the story, you know, uh, the internet was out one day, but I never bought it for the story. I, you know, I, you know me, I'm a multiplayer guy, and the multiplayer, I never got bored of it. Yeah, it was so good, and I wish they kind of went back to that. Like that's why I was like so hyped when they said, oh, the Modern Warfare's are coming back. And they just put the name on it, but it's still the new crappy Call of Duties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but that Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, um, that was, I mean, that was so great. That was so big when it came mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with, I thought of two more, but I'll, oh, I'll kind of okay. like, um, so one is you mentioned Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. One for me was Call of Duty 2. So this was, oh. I believe, a launch title for the Xbox 360. Now, but prior to this, I had been a big Medal of Honor cat, right? That was that was my game. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the people moved from Call of Duty. One of the thing, a lot of the people from Medal of Honor moved to Call of Duty. Um, one thing that I always didn't like about Medal of Honor is that at some point in the game, you would end up as like an operative by yourself doing stuff and i remember being i don't want to be an operative i don't want to be special i just want to be a soldier like everyone else and call of duty gave me that like you're on the battlefield especially those you're on the battlefield with other people and you're shooting other people and and i remember there's like the one mission in the beginning when you're like in the snow and there's a rush that happens and you have to like kill soldiers in the rush and all the different things like that. You have to blow up a building. I think they're using as like cover or a lookout or something like that. And um, that game hit every perfect beat because it was like in every situation, I'm just part of this greater thing. The controls were tight, right? It, it felt like, it felt like Medal of Honor remastered, but it also gave me that okay. camaraderie feeling. And it's like, man, Call of Duty 2 is great. It, it was so great. And I, and I remember just, Loving every bit of it. And then um, quickly, the other one that met my expectations was uh, Assassin's Creed, the first one. I remember that I bought Call of Duty, Call of Duty 4, Mm -hmm. didn't like it, took it back, got Assassin's Creed. And I'm like, oh, this is everything. This is the platforming from (laughs) from Prince of Persia that I want. This is Mm -hmm. history based like I want. This is Assassin's like I want. It has like the sword play, different things like that. The sword play felt like more interesting, kind of like how I always wanted sword play to, to work, where there's there's parries and there's movements and different things that you have to time and stuff, you know? Um, it was something that, it was absolutely perfect. It met all my expectations for me then. That, that kind of started me with, you know, along the line of further Assassin's Creed's. So, yeah. Good. Um. This uh, might be a little early, but I kind of want to go back to Hellblade 2. Like, I'm so in love with this game so far, and yeah. I don't I don't think they're going to add anything crazy to it. I think yeah. it's just going to be the same game, just with all the storytelling. Mm-hmm. You know, so I I want to give it to this. I'll, you know, I'll come back to it when I finish it which is probably to be next level but like I feel like this is one of them as the three hours in yeah. I love it it's met everything it hasn't exceeded it hasn't underwhelmed it's pretty much met what you were expecting from it yeah I just I just hoped it was a continuation mm-hmm. and that's that's what it's been awesome yeah I gotta again I gotta I gotta beat uh, Sacrifice before I go to Saga. Gotta figure it out. I'll figure out a way. Yeah, you got to, man. Yeah. It's it's such a it's such a great title. It's, it's it feels like one that provides a lot of value to get Game Pass. And mm-hmm. then I you know I'm I'm not able to take advantage of it right now because I want to make sure that I'm caught up story wise and everything flows right. But um, yeah, it's a win. It's a win. And it's great that it's came out and hopefully it pushes a lot of a lot of units a lot of copies because i really like what they do with that game um i like how i like how pragmatic how realistic they are with how they approach that game and what they do with it like we understand this is a this is a double a plus title 
but like <laughs> with the limitations that we have for it, we can make it something that's really interesting and really high caliber. And you know, right. and it's like, yeah, it doesn't have to be whatever big triple A game. It's, it's that's not the aim of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, that's our topics, which means that we've uh, we've neared here at the end of the podcast episode. We are at final thoughts. We can provide a final thought about anything that can, that is related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, do you have a final thought? I think I have a final thought. Who would like to offer their final thought first? Let's hear yours. All righty. Um, my final thought is um, I've been looking more into the discussion with the whole like assassin's creed yasuke controversy okay it is, it is quite funny it is all funny to me a lot of controversy is funny because it's just people misunderstanding things left and right mm-hmm. or making up lies to miss to, to deliberate mis- make make people you know misunderstand what's going on um so from what i've understood from what i've seen a lot of people are like hey why is everyone so you know so ticked off about this about this history thing like it's history like this is a historical figure why is everyone so pissed off you know it's a black guy's historical figure from from what i've seen that has not been the criticism that wasn't the criticism we made here very well aware that yasuke is a historical figure right my whole thing was representation is this a good vehicle of which to erase the representation of an Asian person within a vehicle or within a portrayal of their culture that is innately Japanese to utilize someone else to have someone else take that place that cannot wholly represent that experience the way that it would be for a Japanese person. That was my question. Um, but it seems right. like people are misdirecting it to be that, to be, hey, this is history. And they're like, hey, for a game... You know, in a game, you get to, like, you know, Leonardo da Vinci makes your blades and different stuff like that. Like, this isn't realistic. This isn't historically accurate anyway. And it's like, right. It's not a question of historical accuracy. It's a question about representation. And is this the correct vehicle for representation of Yasuke in his story? You know what would be really cool is a Yasuke game. That'd be really awesome. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? Rather makes than sense. shoehorning them into another franchise... Giving us the breath to experience this entire thing. It's a crazy story. Guy is an African slave that somehow ends up in Japan. He becomes a retainer for Nabunaga, right? It it it's it's a really interesting story, but um, instead he'll just be part of a dual protagonist story of Assassin's Creed, where they they've done terrible jobs. They had Altair, the original assassin. Um, he was voiced by an American guy even though he was clearly Arab. His name was Altair. Um, and then they oh. changed it later. I mean, the Assassin's Creed has had some issues with with representation and stuff. But mm-hmm. I think it's always interesting. We kind of talked, maybe like a episode or two before, we have talked about PlayStation, PlayStation fanboys. It's just amazing the amount of people that bootlick for companies. And again, this is another thing where it's like people are mad about, hey, some people are like, hey, they, they don't care about historical accuracy. They're just mad there's a black guy in a game. Well, guess what? There's tons of old people out there, too. But you can't invalidate one argument because there's other idiots out there with a different argument that they're trying to parasite off of. <laughs> so it's it's just been really interesting to see it. I've been seeing it all over TikTok. I've been, you know, seeing it on YouTube and stuff like that. And the conversation has changed to, you know, hey, if you don't believe it's historically accurate, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, are you guys like, I'm looking here like, you're defending Ubisoft? You should be, I understand not wanting to let those people get the say and like have like whatever feel good, but you should be as cautiously, I guess, optimistic. That's the most you should be. You should be as skeptical of (laughs) of Ubisoft than of any company. Mm -hmm. Like, don't like, you know, don't bootlick for them. Come on, dude. But uh, yeah, it's interesting to see. It's my final thought. Yeah, it seems and, uh, they're trying to hit two birds with one stone, but the stone might be going towards their glass house. Right. And again, like, I'm not saying that they're lying, but I'm saying specifically from the angle I'm coming at, it feels like a straw man argument. Where I'm saying, like, I don't know if this is the right vehicle for Yasuke to be in. This feels like the erasure of representation for, for Japanese or 
or um or Asian uh, Asian representation. I mean, it's freaking wild to drop a Assassin's Creed is going to take place in Japan trailer, and we're going to have two protagonists, but one of them's going to be black during AAPI month. I mean, that's freaking that's nutty, dude. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, but they right? did it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if it feels like that, I don't know. I don't know. Again, we're we're yet to see. We're yet to see. In due time, we'll see. We'll see. It'll be oh, here the, eventually. And then just to put a button on that, the other like, the final thought thing too, what I was disappointed in myself, though I though the episode is named that, I am disappointed that I did not follow through with a swagger of a black samurai callback in the last episode. Because we've had swagger of a black team. We said swagger mm-hmm. of a black team, but mm-hmm. I did not say swagger of a black samurai. It was right there. <laughs> it was right there. So that's my bad. Um, I will make sure that when we do our game of the year awards, the, uh, for, here's the thing for our game of the year's awards for the, for the swagger of a black team category, mm-hmm. it will be Assassin's Creed shadows. Even if I don't play it, it's already won the award. So there you go. Future swagger of a black team award you winner here first, folks. Assassin's Creed Shadows. But that's those are my final thoughts. All right, that was a good one. Thanks. Um, my final thought is, I uh, I went to Comic Con this past weekend. Nice. And uh, it was really nice. I didn't splurge this time, and it's got this nice, really cool, uh poster uh this artist drew it has all the ninjas from uh mortal Kombat. okay so i love it you know and it has like the older original ninja styles okay yeah like uh scorpion and sub-zero in the first movie Mm -hmm. you know and it has all of them like that and my my son he wanted a uh Vegeta and Goku poster where they're like powered up and it just it looks amazing actually uh, I was going to show it but I'm, I don't want to get up but it was a one for 40 or two for 60 and I told him as soon as we got there I'm like hey a hundred bucks is yours you can get whatever you want and I was like well you know I'll I'll get one cut him a deal he'll save 10 bucks we both spend 30 and we'll call it a day yeah you know so it, it it was a good time. Uh, a lot of people there. Uh, there was a lot of famous people. You know, lines were just, you know, because they're like zigzag. You know, they were full. Mm-hmm. Some were empty. I think they were because they were on lunch. Cause I didn't see anybody in any of the booth part. But like it, great time. I always recommend at least going to one of them. Yeah. That's cool. Which I know there was, which day did you go? There was three days, right? Uh, yeah, I went Saturday. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Which, yeah. I uh, <laughs> there was of course construction on the freeway oh, yeah. to Novi, right? Mm-hmm. And it took you off of 696 onto some other freeway or whatever. And there was an exit I needed to take, and I didn't realize it. I'm like, okay, I'll just take the next exit. So I was 20 minutes away from my destination, Comic Con, mm-hmm. right? I missed that exit. The GPS rerouted for an hour and 20 minutes because I was in dead stop traffic for seven miles because I missed that freaking exit. I was so mad. It's like that. So mad. I was like, I want to get there early, get there when it opens. Nope. I didn't get there until one o'clock. Opens at 10. I feel like there's every, I feel like every time summer rolls around in Michigan that there's some guy that looks like the Monopoly guy and I feel like whenever it hits like I don't know May May 12th the guy just stomps his feet gets out uh jumps out his chair tosses his hat in the air tosses up a bunch of money and it's like all right time to shut the roads down it's time to go to work <laughs> because they do road work every single summer at the same time and they will they and they will close down Parts of the freeway, they were closed down roads and then subsequent roads that you would detour from that road that got closed down. Mm-hmm. It's chaos every single year. And it's, hey, we're fixing the roads. They're never fixed, by the way. This is a scam. This is a racket. It is right? a scam. It's a racket. The problem, the problem is my, my 
final final thought it, yeah. road construction has become a for-profit business which yes. i get that's what businesses are but why do these roads last like a year three years ten years and then they're back fixing them again yeah that i feel like us as humans have a capability of making roads that can last 50 years yeah at I mean, least there's places that do a, that do a great job but instead they barely do whatever the roads break down you get these potholes in it and then you got these freaking you know you got these guys out there in their orange vests and they're shoveling whole shovels full of cocoa pebbles and they're putting them in these little in these little potholes and then they pat them down and say all right that's good to go that's good and then you're driving over that so then you got little bumps and stuff and then that stuff doesn't cure 100 percent all the way so you're driving over it and you're flicking that stuff into people's windshields and it's chipping their windows or chipping their paint or doing whatever else and it's like mm -hmm. hey just get your roads right get the monopoly get the monopoly man down here <laughs> and tell them what we want Let me get started on the roads. I, uh, our our side rants for you. Yeah. Uh, that, that, those are my final thoughts. <laughs> that, that, well, that brings us to the end of level 105 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, you can subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service, like Apple, like uh, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Spotify. Check us out there. Um, you can also follow us on the socials, like Facebook. There's Instagram and TikTok. Uh, and of course, uh, we have some stuff on Twitter. I got I got to set the Twitter game up. Uh, but then, and there's also, of course, YouTube, where we upload video versions of the podcast. If you want to support, there are two ways you can do so. One, merch, get a phone case, shirt, a hat, perhaps. Right? Uh, there's our logo, David's face. We've got everything there. Um, another way is also we have a Patreon. If you want to support us, we have three membership tiers, a two, five and seven dollar tier, each offering different bits and goodies. Um, recently for patrons, the Game Dev Tycoon Let's Play series episode two dropped there. More will be coming there, uh, but there will also be other goodies and bits that will drop there as well, as well as on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. That is it for me. David, is there anything else you want to add? Please. Oh, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level.